All the way back in June, during a review of the Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K G2, I said something along the lines of, bring back something like the, do you guys remember the Blackmagic Cinema Camera, the 2.5K? That thing was so cool. But I never expected that it would actually happen, especially so soon. This is a camera I've been waiting for for a long time for some really specific reasons. We'll talk about those soon. There's kind of a lot to unpack with this one, but real quick, while we're talking about unpacking, in the box, Blackmagic includes the camera body, a battery, a battery charger, AC power, and a bunch of international adapters. They've opted for the newer pocket cinema style for the design of the camera body. It's made of the usual carbon fiber and polycarbonate, and the body itself is light and reasonably solid. Blackmagic has given us a single CF Express B slot. I think it's really interesting they only included one, but CF Express B is really fast and not as expensive as CF Express A, which is nice. On the opposite side, the I.O. is familiar, too many XLRs, USB-C, AC power, HDMI, and 3.5mm in and out. The menus and touchscreen are fantastic as usual. The main thing to note here is that Blackmagic is restricting us to B-RAW only this time around. Might be a problem for some, but this is a complete non-issue for me since I'm always in DaVinci Resolve. The grip is nice and chunky with plenty of room. I think it's perfectly comfortable, especially with the design of the buttons clearly being intended to make one hand operation possible if needed. There's the usual playback, menu, focus punch in, and high frame rate buttons, as well as auto iris and one shot autofocus all within reach of the operator's right thumb. On the top of the camera body, Blackmagic gives us a power switch and three customizable function buttons. I keep mine set to false color, peaking, and view LUT. Deeper into the grip, there are white balance, ISO, and shutter buttons, as well as record, frame grab, and a control dial. Also in case you need it, there's another record button on the front of the camera between the grip and the new sensor, which is clearly the star of the show here. Coming in at 36 by 24 millimeters, this 6K CMOS sensor is indeed full frame, which is Blackmagic's first ever. In case you're wondering, here's a full list of resolutions and frame rates. There is a lot of hype around full frame sensors, and I guess there has been for a really long time. I think it's important to not get wrapped up in sensor size before you've considered what kind of lenses you want to shoot on. If you don't give two rap patooties about what lens you use and you just make it work with whatever's available, then save your money and keep shooting with Super 35 cameras. It's still actually the industry standard for video. Full frame cameras are referred to as large format a lot of times. If you have really specific lenses that are designed for full frame that you want to use, this can make a huge difference though, and allow you to use those lenses to their maximum potential. Of all my favorite lenses I've used in my career, almost all of them are vintage lenses designed for full frame coverage or modern cine lenses designed for full frame coverage. So I was super excited to hear that Blackmagic is investing in large format sensors now. But that's only half the equation. Everything is contingent on lens mount and flange distance, and Blackmagic did us a favor and went with Leica's L mount. We'll talk about some of the insane lenses you can use in a second, but the main takeaway is you can adapt almost any lens to the Cinema Camera 6K. You can adapt EF and F DSLR lenses, modern EF cinema glass, vintage 35mm lenses, and even vintage medium format lenses, which is where the fun begins. One of my favorite series of lenses is the Mamiya Secor C medium format lenses for Mamiya's 645 cameras, and none are more infamous than the 80mm f1.9. Rumor has it that Christopher Nolan chose to use this lens in The Dark Knight and Interstellar, which is only possible because the image circle is big enough to cover IMAX cameras. That gives us more than enough room to adapt this to the new full frame sensor. Enough room to actually add a speed booster. Enter the Kippon Bayvis 0.71 Leica L to Mamiya 645 speed booster, which essentially turns our 80mm 1.9 into a 57mm 1.3. An important thing to note is the lack of internal NDs in the Cinema Camera 6K. Not a huge deal, we'll just add an adapter ring to the front of the Mamiya since we are certainly going to need some light reduction and just add our Tilta Mirage map box with Tilta's variable ND already installed. While we're at it, I'm gonna add a couple of other additions really quick. For starters, I wish that I had a cage for this bad boy, but I don't. I looked briefly and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of options yet. By the time this review comes out, maybe there's, there's more. The good news is they did give us two quarter 20s on the bottom. So the first thing we're gonna do is throw on my favorite base plate, which is the Kessler K plate. It's got 15 millimeter slots built in, and the best part is it's got these little rubber feet so that your camera sits square on a surface instead of falling over every time you set it down, which is nice. And there we go, pretty solid. Oh, by the way, I guess we should uh, 
put our lens combination on there. There is our speed booster. Here's our Mamiya Secor C. That's what that looks like attached. Kind of nice. As usual, we're going to add some 15 millimeter rails with a Condor Blue gold mount battery plate on the back with a, a Watson Pro 158 watt hour gold mount battery. Just the biggest battery that I currently own. The V-mount will totally work too. Now, you could do an external display. I'm actually gonna put one on there to show you. With this setup, with the tilting screen and how bright it gets and how sharp it is and everything, I don't know if I would run an external display on this camera. I might. This screen is really nice, so if you wanna leave a little bit of room, that you can still pull the display out. That's an option as well. Now, unfortunately, this camera does not come with internal NDs. It's not that big of a deal. We can just add our Tilta Mirage map box. I have the variable ND tray already installed. I already got my adapter ring onto the front of the Mamiya lens, so we'll just clip that right on. More than likely, on a lot of occasions, I would just run the camera like this. We are gonna put an external display on it so that we can see what we're doing a little bit more. But now we have battery life all day. We have an ND filter so we can control our exposure and we have a solid rig that you can hold and shoot handheld work with. It's got a lot of weight. We do have Blackmagic's viewfinder attached to the camera, by the way, you can also use that. So we'll just throw on my Ninja 5 really quick. Again, this would be another time when having a cage would be ideal so that this would be a little bit more solid and things wouldn't be able to rotate once you tighten them down, but this will totally do. You guys know anybody that runs their rigs like this? <laughs> Drop this down. What if we go upside down? Oh, this is it right here. In HDMI, we'll go ahead and run HDMI over here as well. Kind of cool, right? I wish there was a top handle. We were out of mounting points though. Again, with a cage, you'd be able to do this. So let's power everything on. Yeah, that's kind of nice. <laughs> Man, the Ninja 5 is loud. So the included screen on the Cinema Camera 6K is brighter than my Ninja 5. It is really impressive how great this panel is. Yeah, let's go shoot some stuff. Here's a nice little festive shot of a, uh, a Christmas village, and it looks like we even have a train. The reason why I wanna show this shot is because this was recorded at 1000 ISO. So we're at the lower circuit here. This is a dual native ISO camera. So I wanted to see what the noise performance is like. We haven't bumped up to the second native ISO, so it hasn't cleaned itself up yet. If I kinda of zoom in through here, I'm actually going to boost the gain so we can see more of this. The noise itself is pretty granular and easily workable. So let's just do a quick grade on this shot so we can see what it's gonna look like at the end. I'm gonna do a color space transform, of course, and let's unwrap, we're working with film gen five, and there we go. Yeah, maybe we'll take something like that. Let's bump in here. Yeah, I mean, the noise itself is not bad at all. Super clean. I mean, I think this looks great especially for a thousand ISO. We could have gone up to 1250 and switched to the other circuit and gotten a little bit of a cleaner shot, but I am super happy with this. Also, look at this ridiculous soap bubble bokeh from this Mamiya. Absolutely absurd. Cool, we have one other shot here. I'm going to hold option one to save the grade to slot number one and then command number one. That will paste it onto another shot that you want. So we'll just use that as a starting point also, I want to show this one is a little bit more shaky handheld wise. It's as easy as popping over here, going to our little stabilizer, hitting camera gyro, and I'm going to do like 0.5. I 
And then I also want to reframe, so we'll zoom in a bit, tilt up, pan to the right. This gyroscopic stabilization is kind of insane. It's it's one of those things that I thought was sort of gimmicky whenever it first came around with the, the pocket line. But I mean, it is very, very useful. I apply it on every single shot, even if I set the strength to zero just to get rid of the rolling shutter. But it does a fantastic job. And we can just zoom in here. A little bit of texture, a little bit of grain. I don't think it's bad at all. I like a, a little bit of texture in my shots anyway. Look at this guy. What is he doing? We're at 1000 ISO again. So we're kind of pushing the first circuit. I want to see what daylight looks like with that. Actually, we'll just copy and paste our last grade here. And this needs to be a little bit warmer. Another sort of characteristic of this lens. Lots of distorted bokeh here. This is almost <laughs> like anamorphic looking or something. This looks super cool. Kind of brings your eye into the center of the frame whenever you have aberrations like that. And yeah, there's there's a little bit of texture in this shot because we have shot it at 1000 ISO. I don't know how much you guys can see through YouTube compression, but what I love about Blackmagic footage is it's never really in need of unsharpening, which I have to do with a lot of cameras, especially if it's like Fujifilm. Uh, I do it with Sony footage, sometimes with Canon footage. I know we're using a rather soft vintage lens here, but I never have to go in and take off some of that, that digital sharpness. Which by the way, if you wanted to, you could just pop over here, sharpen, pull it up 0.5 two, three, something like that. Love the image quality. Colors look great as normal. More than anything, I'm kind of surprised at how familiar this camera feels. I think we sort of made a big deal about it being full frame, but like I said earlier, I think it's more of a question of what kind of lenses you want to use and not, wow, this footage looks so different. It looks like normal, great, refined Blackmagic footage. The image quality is great. Color science is great. Dynamic range is still great. Highlight roll off is still great. Love the noise pattern and the texture of all the footage. You just can utilize ridiculous lenses like this now, which is a whole lot of fun. I think this is one of the most interesting cameras on the market right now because we have the usual black magic advantages like great image quality for great prices. But now we have a full frame sensor and a short flange distance, which unlocks an entire new world of lenses to be used. Plus with the gyroscopic stabilization, that's even able to fix or at least majorly reduce rolling shutter with any lens that you put on it. You can speed boost a medium format lens onto a 6K raw shooting camera for $2,600, which is ridiculous. I think you should rent one to try it out. Try it out with some of your vintage primes and you'll see what I'm talking about. This thing is really interesting and really fantastic if you ask me. But anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys stopping by. I'll see you next time.